In the last video, we talked about the principle of least action. And we said that if an object is following some path from one point in time and space to another point in time and space, the path that the object will actually follow is the path for which this integral is a minimum. Now in this video, I want to talk about how we can actually find that path for which this integral is minimum. Now before we tackle that directly, I just want to compare it to another problem that you might recognize from earlier on in calculus or physics. So you have some function. Maybe it's y is a function of t. Right? This is t and that's y. And say our function looks something like something like this. A big arc here. And we want to find the minimum of this function. Well, a good way to do that is to find the point when the slope equals zero. So if we had this, if we had an equation for this thing y that we're talking about, if we took the derivative and we set it equal to zero, we would get the t value where y is a minimum. So we would do dy dt equals zero. And we would solve for the t when that's true. So the derivative is zero somewhere around here, right? So maybe maybe right here. We'll call this maybe we'll call this t min, right? Time when y is a minimum. So what we're really saying when we say that the derivative is zero here is that if we move t to a slightly a slightly different time, right? Maybe right here. That that we can see it's curving and that it will make a tiny difference, but the difference is so tiny that we really don't need to care about it. So we could say this, we, we could say is t min plus delta t. So this delta t is a small change in time. And at this minimum, we know that adding this little extra adding this little extra thing here doesn't change the function at all or doesn't change the value of y at all and to do that we just had to take the first derivative right the first derivative here is zero the second derivative is not zero so there is some you could say second order change here because there is a second derivative but to first order so in physics you'll hear people say to first order and that just means that we're looking at what the function's first derivative does. So if we want to do this, something similar to that for a path, for minimizing the integral along a path, I'll draw my axes. We're looking for a path that when we change the path just a little bit, we don't get an appreciable change in the action. So maybe finish drawing this here t1 to t2 going from um, going from position 1 to position 2 so maybe our true path looks something like this where it goes up and overshoots a little bit and arcs back down now another slightly different path we could take is something that starts out a little faster but doesn't peak quite as doesn't get to quite as high of a peak and it's something like this, right? These two paths are fairly similar, but they're off by a little bit. So we can think of these two paths. Maybe the pink path is this T min and the orange path is T min plus delta T. So it's near to the true path, but it's not quite the same. So how should we think about this delta t? We can't think of it as just a difference in one value as we did before. But if we want to think about the difference between these two paths, these paths actually have a difference at each point along along t. So it's it's actually a function instead of just a single value. So for that function we're going to use the letter eta, the Greek letter eta looks like an N that's walking down some steps, it kind of how I think of it. 
but this difference function eta is a function of t, right? So at this point in time, right before we get to the end, we can say that this is eta here, right? Eta of this point in time. But earlier in time, the difference was here, right? The difference between these two paths is changing. And here, actually, eta here is 0. So eta equals 0 here. And eta has a different value down here. Now, now it's a different sign. Right? Before, before, the orange path was at a lower x. And now, down here, the orange was at a higher x. So this would be a different sign. We can see that the difference in x's between these two paths is different at each point in time. So we need to use this, this function that we're calling eta to, to describe the difference between these two paths. So maybe one, one way we could define eta would be, we could call it um, the orange x of t minus the pink x of t. So hopefully this color is enough to, to differentiate that we're that this orange curve here is is an x of t, right? It has a position x at every uh, position in time, and then the same for this pink one. So it's the difference between these two functions at each point in time. Now, if we rearrange this a little bit, we could say that the true path, or not the true path, any path some arbitrary path, this orange path in this case, equals the path, the true path here, this pink path that we've said is the true path, plus this eta function, which also depends on t. Now, since it's not very common to use colors to differentiate between two different functions, I'll add something else here and I'll put a bar over this um, this pink X but this is this is what we're calling the true path so if we want to calculate the action the action for this orange path here we could write the integral from t1 to t2 to t2 of the potential energy which is a function of x which is a function of t minus the potential energy which is also a function of x which is a function of t integrated over time now what we can do is we can take this and we can substitute this in to this integral here we can say maybe I'll need some more room here so s the integral of this orange path is equal to, or the, the action of this orange path here is equal to the integral over time from t1 to t2 of the potential energy, or the kinetic energy. And then instead of writing this orange x function, we're going to substitute this in here. Say that the true path x bar of t plus this difference in the paths, this eta of t plus, oop, not plus, minus the potential energy. And then we're also going to substitute again here. So the true path, x bar of t, plus the difference between the two paths eta of t integrated over time integrated over time I'll make this orange now let's go back for a moment to our our earlier example our review of how to find the minimum of a function we're looking for the point in time when y doesn't change so if we deviate just a little bit from that point if we add this small delta t it doesn't make a difference for the value of y. And we found that point by taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0. Now when we're looking for the path of least action, the minimum action, 
we're looking for a function where when we add this small deviation, this eta function, it doesn't actually change the value of the action. So this x bar, the true path, is analogous to the t minimum from before, and this eta function is analogous to the delta t. So it's just a small change. So this seems like a reasonable stopping point. And in the next video, we'll put some terms in for these functions and, and do some more things with them and get closer to finding the real path.